Welcome to another video trying to install some NVMe SSD into an probably decade old Apple Mac Pro. So unfortunately um, this is like the second generation Mac Pro 2,1 which unfortunately came with this last 32-bit EFI BIOS and thus officially by Apple cannot run Mac OS versions past 10.6 or something like that. I think it's quite a shame that support for this this Pro machine was actually discontinued quite quickly. For us, from the investment point of view, it was due to this, of course, quite of a failure. I think the configuration was probably $8,000 or Euro. With the developer discount, it was some 6000 For this dual CPU, Xeon in total 8 core with 8 gigs of RAM or something like that. For this kind of investment, um, this is really not understandable and why we really get more and more disappointed with Apple. So, but coming back to this, so we're actually most likely going with AMD Ryzen for the next big servers. But having this little bit up and down machine next to my desk, I thought I should better make use of the existing resources and with Linux virtualization uses for some other server and development. So this is a nice machine. Why is this not totally straight though? Some time ago I actually tried to upgrade the Xeon CPUs. I even ordered them and have them in, in stock here. But the uh, BIOS and maybe SMC for the temperature control do not support those newer CPUs. and. Um, this is also really a pity that even if this would fit electronically and pinwise and everything in a PC mainboard, you would get an updated BIOS and things like this and could install it. But here with this machine, you could upgrade it, but yet you're stuck. And even the 32-bit BIOS. So back in the day, if Apple would have been willing to professionally support the pro customers, they could have released a new 64-bit BIOS build if they really wanted to. But Obviously, they did not want it. Actually, the developer and open source community actually created a loader that simply with the 32-bit BIOS from Apple simply loads the 64-bit kernel. That's no problem with this. So as I'm using the four spinning disks for big data storage, I cannot put an SSD into any of them. So this is why I got the idea to install a PCIe card and use this for SSD caching, like kind, kind of like a fusion drive just on the Linux side. So I got here a crucial 275 gigabyte M2 SSD and a little bit no name, I think, easy DIY PCI Express M2 adapter. The reason I went with this is simply that they were the cheapest. I don't want to overspend revitalizing this older system. So I basically got the cheapest quality looking items for this um, on Amazon PCIe. So this is just a passive adapter routing the PCIe lanes to the M2 port. Don't forget to ground you a little bit. So actually it's the first time I deal with an M2 module coming from Mac. They obviously didn't have a standard one. So I took a quick look. They are physically coded so you should not be able to put them in the, in the wrong direction. So just a distance bolt to screw in here. So with the distance bolt installed, just press in the M2 module there. Because this over engineering here for this nice bolts. Spring loaded bolts. Probably the first time they are being removed. Probably should make a mark on this that this came out of this fancy Mac Pro. So this is just in there. These are these nice spring loaded bolts. It's a little bit dusty though. There is expensive fully buffered RAM. Maybe I even once upgraded. In the Amazon description, it was not written that this is a regular serial ATA module. Could not even come to my mind that someone wants to use a serial ATA M2 module. I knew they existed, but it wasn't indicated there. 
I had to go to another local store here and uh, get a slightly more expensive Samsung A4 and VME SSD. 250 gigabytes, slightly smaller, slightly more expensive, but that's what it is. It's just inserted here into this header and fixed with this screw. And then it's just inserted here into the PCIe slots. And that's it. This is obviously the secure shell connection to the server. So plenty of PCI devices. This is actually for me still a little bit funny to see. I think this was one of the first machines with that many PCI devices. So this is a newly inserted Samsung NVMe SSD mass storage controller. And on Linux systems this usually will show up as NVMe 0 with NVMe index N1. So you can just initialize this with whatever file system you prefer. Or as I explained in this T2 article number 6, with a new LVM RAID setup in 2015 I already added some information how to add caching, basically volume group extend, volume group uh, with a caching device, type cache, size and name and the volume group and so on. So it works. And if you use this on the Mac, you obviously see it as a normal block device in the disk utilities that you can set up even like a fusion drive for caching if you like to. I hope you learned something and don't forget to subscribe for even more videos to come.